Welcome back. Uh, well, we still have a few minutes for the markets to start and we have lots of uh, experts with us to analyze stocks. But we have a uh, news development. The Cosmos film stock has nearly doubled this year. And here's a new innovation from their stable. Cosmos Films has developed a new transparent printable BOPP film called Kepler with a higher heat resistance. Pankaj Pudar, CEO of Cosmos Films, joins us to detail the impact. Pankaj, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us and many congratulations if, there is, if this is an important product and innovation. Uh, can you tell us you know, immediately what this means in terms of revenue? Are you good to go in terms of production and uh, will it translate into a significant revenue growth next year? Yeah, so Teplor, a heat-resistant BOPP film from Cosmo Films, is a revolutionary product enabling monomaterial structures which will help FMCG companies to make their packaging truly recyclable in an easy and cost-effective way. We've already applied for the product patent, registered the Teplor trademark, and have an exclusivity for the raw material. We expect Teplor to become a 75 to 100 crore product for Cosmo Films within three years. Okay, 75 to 100 crores of uh, top line edition, that sounds good. Uh, <clears throat> on, a, on a different note, just to understand the dynamics right now, Mr. Podar, we understand that Bopet spreads are up some 40% uh, just month on month. Uh, BOPP prices are apparently also going up. Uh, imports are not coming in as quickly as one would have liked. Now, what does all this mean for your margins, these high Bopet spreads? Do they mean better margins for you? Yes, so as of now, Cosmo Films is not into bio, uh, BOPET films. We are into BOPP films. And as you rightly pointed out, actually there are multiple things happening in the global market. Uh, one side, uh, you know, there is uh, raw material shortages, the raw material prices are going up, and that's also pushing the BOPP film prices. Uh, the other challenges are obviously the logistic challenges globally because of the container availability. Uh, but yes, uh, overall the margins are better and uh, so are uh, the growth in specialty films by Cosmo. Okay, coming back to this BOPP film, uh, you said that 75 to 100 crores, is that the market size or is that the revenue potential for you? And what kind of margins do you think you can enjoy? Is there any fresh capex that you will put to work for this? Yes, so there is no capex. The market potential could be far higher and this is an innovation. It's a revolutionary product. Cosmo is the first one to bring it in the market. Uh, 75 to 100 is what we feel uh, we can get it approved from SNCG within three years and scale it up to that level. Uh, margins, obviously, given that uh, we will exclusively manufacture it, uh, we, ex uh, we expect that the margins will be uh, quite reasonable on this. Okay, uh, Mr. Podar, just to come back on the spreads, you mentioned that even for BOPP, which is your product segment, uh, their end product prices are also going up. But is the spread expanding for you? And at a blended margin level basis, what should we expect for second half margins? Yes, yeah, so the spreads are fluctuating quite a bit. Uh, I would say that in general, they're at a good level. Uh, like uh, to give an example for the current month, uh, the raw material prices for us went up from 16th but we were able to uh, improve the pricing from first itself or maybe third or fourth of the month. Uh, so yes, for first 10, 12 days, uh, the margins were a little better. But in general, the margins are uh, stable. They're at a healthy level. And, uh, you know, so overall, uh, the H2 margins uh, should be slightly better than H1 as of now. You know, uh, healthy doesn't help us actually, Pankaj. Uh, you know, we are looking for a number. Uh, you did very well. Your operating margins in the first half were uh, averaging about 17%, much better than year ago levels. So now you have a new product also, which you say will, uh, you know, you can charge more for it. Uh, even taking into uh, account the commodity cost, therefore, what is the, can you do 17%? Will you do even better than that in terms of margins? Yes, so from margin perspective, you know, there are two elements of it. One is because the raw material costs are higher, uh, you know, the margin as a okay. percentage may not go up as much, mm. but the absolute margins should certainly go up. The second factor for Cosmo is that we had to take a small shutdown in December. Mm -hmm. uh, we were earlier thinking that we'll have to take it in uh, for 30 days for one line. Uh, I'm happy to share that we were able to do it in 17 days, wow. which was a world record uh, for that kind of a conversion for any line in the world. Okay. Uh, we have also another small shutdown in quarter four. Uh, but I think uh, barring those things, our margins should definitely be better than H1. 
Okay, let me put it this way. Uh, you know, uh, the, we are obviously going in the thro uh, going into a difficult period now because of container problems, logistic problems, as we are coming out of COVID. Uh, can you give us some ballpark idea of how much your volume of uh, sales will grow in FY22, in the year starting April 1? How might be the revenues for that year? Yes, yeah, so, you know, we are uh, coming out with multiple, uh, I would say, product, product categories. Oh, oh. Uh, we this year started master batches, mm -hmm. and the chemical plant is expected to start in early quarter one of next year. Uh, so that should help us uh, ramp up revenue. So we are expecting a 10% jump uh, in the revenue. But more than that, uh, we expect that the margin should even have a healthier growth. Okay. All right, then can you tell us a little bit about uh, how, how much did the plant cost what are your CAPEX plans and therefore what is your debt and free cash position? Yeah, so we are sitting at a debt EBITDA ratio of 1.5, which is very healthy. Our debt equity ratio is also close to 0.75, so which is again at a very good level. Uh, coming to the CAPEX side, uh, in next year our CAPEX uh, is relatively small at let's say 40 to 50 crores. However, in the FY22-23, uh, because we are coming with a specialty polyester line, uh, in that year, we should be increasing a capex of roughly 300 to 350 crores. Uh, when and even with the capex, uh, we expect uh, our debt EBITDA ratios to uh, remain uh, fairly strong because uh, you know we will be earning margins in the next two years, and uh, therefore we do not expect debt EBITDA ratios or debt equity ratios to uh, go uh, less, uh, more than two or uh, more than 0 0.75, 0 0.8. Okay, so just to uh, give us a sense of which way demand is headed, 25% of your revenues comes from lamination films and 41% from packaging films. Where are you seeing the largest uh, potential now as we head into you know, the new year? Yes, so there are three segments which are growing for us. Uh, packaging films is one segment where sustainability is our key theme, where we can help our customers make easily recyclable structures. Uh, the second focus area is our label and within label is self-adhesive label uh, where we are already now a globally number two player and uh, the way we are growing hopefully uh, within next couple of years we should become the global leaders for self-adhesive label. Uh, the third segment that is growing very well for us is uh, industrial films and synthetic paper and synthetic paper again has a significant potential. Uh, this product can easily be 15% of Cosmo sales within next two to three years. And with a, uh, quite a decent margin, uh, the margin should be uh, close to 25% on that product. Okay. All right, Mr. Podar, thank you very much for uh, giving us details on the business. That's Cosmo Films. And uh, just for viewers' references, this is a company that's been very steady in terms of its top line and its bottom line growth last three years. And it's moved from revenues of about 1,800 all the way to 2,200. Uh, and, uh, you know, EBITDA and PAT have also moved up. So fairly consistent in terms of its performance. In fact, I don't know if... And I think it's just good to hear that mm. it's an innovation. Yeah. And we don't often hear of that. So uh, innovation, uh, that means cutting edge. That's always a positive. Uh, yeah, mm. I, even I was going to ask Mehrboon yeah. that. Uh, if Mehrboon is back with us, uh, uh, Mehrboon, I hope you caught a coffee in between. Uh, but do you track the stock at all? And does, uh, did the conversation enthuse you to learn more about the stock? Yeah, I, uh, I tracked the stock. Okay. I tracked the sector. I met Mr. Pankaj Koda and honestly, the two, three meetings with him in the head of Delhi office had made me feel that this guy is going to do wonders with the company. This was about three, four years ago. So I read this management under Pankaj Koda's leadership as a very decent management. And this particular sector, according to me, the innovation which is going to keep on happening is going to attract attention. And in a country in a world where social distancing has happened over the years, this packaging possibly is something which is going to attract more and more attention. And two companies in this segment stand out. One is Cosmo Films and one is Tech Packaging, a Hyderabad based company. Now both these companies at the stock set with their available, while there could be minor correction here and there, I think they hold potential investors to possibly earn some appreciation on the investments in these companies. I rate them very high. Okay, all right.
By the way, in the pre-open, uh, we're getting the exact 20-point lift up that the SGX Nifty was indicating. So both are in sync, at least for now. And it's IT all the way, thanks to those uh, you know, blockbuster results from Accenture or your NCL infrastructure.